I, I request uh, my fellow panelists who are there, they can also switch on their cameras. Uh, th uh, this, sir, uh, uh, program is being co hosted along with uh, Dr. Getika and Shweta Wadera, who is over there along with me in my team. Yeah. Very good evening, sir. Good evening, Dr. Manoj. Yeah, hi, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Okay, very good evening to all the attendees and to Professor Paul, who have joined us today, September 26th, in this evening webinar, which is being organized by the National Academy of Sciences, India, Delhi Chapter, and the MHRD Institution Innovation Council, the India Lupadhyay College. Uh, this webinar is hosted as part of the uh, Golden Commemoration Year celebration of the DST, as it was established in 1971 and 2020 to 2021, we are celebrating the 50 years of the establishment of the DST. And this is also supported under the DBT Star College program of the Deen Dialupadhyay High College. And I now request uh, Professor uh, Shweta Vadera to kindly introduce Professor Shankar Pal, who is the speaker for today. Am I audible? Yeah. A very good evening, uh, distinguished scientists, and uh, my respected uh, panelists, and my dear friends, our attendees who are attending the special public lecture. I'll read out the CV of Professor, Professor Sankar K. Pal. He's a distinguished scientist and a former director of Indian Statistical Institute. He founded the Machine Intelligence Unit and the Center for Soft Computing Research, a national facility in ISI Calcutta. He is currently an INSA Distinguished Professor and an ISI Emeritus Professor working at ISI Calcutta. Professor Paul worked at University of California, Berkeley and the University of Maryland College Park in 1986-87, the NASA Johnson Space Center Austin, Texas in 1990 to 92 and 94, and in US Naval Research Laboratory, Washington DC in 2004. Since 1997, he has been a distinguished visitor of IEEE Computer Society USA for the Asia Pacific region and held several visiting positions in Italy, Poland, Hong Kong, and Australian universities. He is the co-author of 20 books and more than 400 research publications in the areas of pattern recognition and machine learning, image processing, data mining, soft computing, neural nets, genetic algorithms, fuzzy sets, rough sets, web intelligence, social networks, cognitive machine, and bioinformatics. Professor Pal is a life fellow of the IEEE and fellow of the World Academy of Sciences, International Association for Pattern Recognition, International Association of Fuzzy Systems, International Rough Set Society, and all the four national academies of science or engineering in India. He visited 45 countries as a keynote or invited speaker or an academic visitor he has received the 1990 S.S. Bhatnagar Prize, which is the most coveted award for a scientist in India. In 2013, Padma Shri, which is one of the highest civilian awards by the President of India, and many prestigious awards in India and abroad. Professor Pal is an associate editor of IEEE Trans Pattern Analysis and Machine Intelligence 2002-6, IEEE Trans Neural Networks 94 to 98 and 2003 to 2006, Neurocomputing from 1995 to 2005, Pattern Recognition Letters 93 to 2011, International Journal Pattern Recognition and Artificial Intelligence, Applied Intelligence, Information Sciences, Fuzzy Sets and Systems. We welcome you, sir, to the special public lecture and I now invite you to deliver your talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you it's my just great pleasure to be present and also being included as a speaker 
in the line with all Nobel laureates and uh, FRS. So actually, uh, whenever I was invited, I raised this issue to uh, Dr. Saxena, <laughs> that, uh, that how can I be fitting in this uh, list of all giant people. But anyway, it's my pleasure. So the topic, as I uh, decided, uh, granular mining, uncertainty modeling, and data science. And I will explain really basically the concepts and some applications and uh, some challenging issues. The granular mining basically it is a subject a little older than a decade. So it is still in the research phase, but it has many promises. Now, the way I have uh, prepared my PPTs, I'll explain in two to three slides what is granular computing? Why it is relevant to data mining? Then what is granulation? Is basic components at the granules. Then how come rough set becomes so important in granular computing? And what is the concept of information granules? Then I'll show some examples. Then I'll go for generalized rough set and entropy for modeling uncertainty arising from granularity as well as uncertainty arising from vagueness or overlapping concept, not uncertainty arising from probability of occurrence of, of an event. Then I'll show two applications, mainly video processing, object tracking problem under ambiguous situations, difficult situations, and micro oscillation one example, a role of granules says lower approximation, the challenging issues that includes big data analytics, deep learning, but without those, nothing. And how the subject has evolved since 1995, when I started working in pattern recognition in Indian Statistical Institute, and today, 2020, evolution of the subject from pattern science to data science. So what is granulation? Basically, it's a natural clustering. When you look at the audience in a lecture room, what you see is really some girls are sitting in some place, some young boys and girls are in one place, some old people are in the front side, or some middle-aged people. So that is what is called natural clustering. But without looking at individually, audience, you have a overall idea about the audience in terms of some clustering. Similarly, when you look at any scene, you see what you see overall, some water body, sky, vegetation, road, and structure. So this is what is called natural. That is replacing a fine-grained universe. Universe is fine grains by coarse grains, more in line of human perception. So it is basically a process like self-organization, self-production, morphogenesis, Darwinian evolution that are abstracted from natural phenomena. And the clusters or segments, groups, that so evolved by natural clustering are called granules. So granules is the effect of granulation. So in short, granulation means it's a process of formation and representation of granules by information abstraction and data and derivation knowledge from data. So this is a clear. Now let's see what are the examples of granules. Mathematically, it's a basically a clump of indiscernible entities in terms of similarity, proximity, or functionality, or, or just something else with respect to given attributes or features. So given attributes and feature, you find some, with respect to some uh, characters like a similarity, property, functionality, or anything, you get some indistinguishable entities. These are called values. Example, age, very young age, young, not so old, etc. So here you see, you do not go by the specific age, how many years and months. You look at the people and decide is a very young or young or so. So it's called granule. Direction, when you drive a car, what you see, you make slightly turn left, 
slightly right turned and so on. So these are called canon. We do not go by the exact degree. Similarly, in a school, every section or class can be considered as a canon because that the students are determined either by age group or by sex or by marks obtained in the previous class. Similarly, in the image, look at this one. Here, there are six consecutive gray levels. According to Weber's law, naked eye cannot discriminate. So, the regions of similar color, similar gray values, they can be considered as granules. Now, look at this. Here, some of these granules here, their boundary is ill-defined, fuzzy, because you cannot say where to stop the young, where to slip the slightly there. Whereas here it is crisp, here it is crisp. So granules may be crisp or may be fuzzy. Now, now what is granular computing? Granular computing has two components. It's a basically information processing paradigm that works with the process of information granulation or abstraction, number one. Number two, their computation is performed using information granules, not the data points. That means you just forget the data. You only based on some information granules or granules. And since you are information granules or granules are nothing but compressed information, so you are basically playing with information compression. Therefore, possibility of computational gain. Therefore, it is suitable for mining clusters. That was the basic our philosophy based on which we started working about a decade back. So in summary, it is basically a nature-inspired information processing paradigm with the basic element called granules. And granules play a significant role, I will show. And granules are a collection of indistinguishable, which you cannot discriminate given the attribute sets. And they are drawn together in terms of some characteristics like similarity, functionality, physical proximity, etc. And granules evolve in the process of abstraction and derivation of this problem. Very clear definition. So obviously, they're in size and shape of granule. They will determine the different levels of granularity. That means at what level of granularity you want to make your decision. It characterizes a specific aspect of the problem. They will represent the model differently and ultimately regulate the decision. Therefore, granules play a significant role in granular. And my next, my following discussion will be on that issue. So given a granulated, now I have, I have known the granulated domain. Now given a granulated domain, I define a set, this set over it. Given a granulated domain, I define this. Then I approximate the set using granules in terms of lower and upper, in terms of that from inner side or from outer side, that is from below or from outer, from ever. And then this gives a rise concept, this is, gives rise the concept of rough set, which was explained by Professor Paula in 1982 from Poland. Now, what is this? Let's see the pictorial value. This is an inverse, where is your B is the feature space. Uh, this is my granulated domain. That means here granule elements X cannot be discriminated with any element here, given these two X axis, Y axis called B space. If, in, if you add one more dimension, then size of the granules will be different. So the granule XB is the set of all elements which are indiscernible with respect to point X in terms of feature set. So given this granulated domain, we define a set, crisp set X. Now we make it approximation from inner side, from outer side. Let's see the inner approximation. I call it, we call it lower approximation. That is, these are the granules which will definitely belong to this set. Now, from outer approximation, by the orange line, that means these are the granules which definitely belong as well as possibly belong. And this upper minus lower, they determine the granules which possibly belong. And they create problem in, in this shape. So when, so a set X defined over this feature space omega B is approximated 
in terms of granule from lower and upper side. And this approximation is characterizes the set X as rough set. So it basically gives a rough description. And when inner lower approximation equal to upper approximation, we call it a exact set. That means B definable. And when otherwise, we call it roughly definable. That means if there is no granularity, there is no roughness. Note that rough set, though the name is rough, but basically it is a crisp set, but with rough description. So therefore, unlike uh, fuzzy set theory, but I can give uh, thousands of examples like long street, large number, beautiful lady, uh, uh, blonde hair, so on, so on. I cannot give ready-made answers on examples of rough set. Because it's basically a crisp set, but with rough description because of the granularity, because of the incompleteness is knowledge. And therefore, this incompleteness knowledge or exact definition of X in the universe, in terms of lower approximation, they signify the incompleteness of knowledge. And this is, it has immediately two applications. I picked up this subject when I was working at NASA Johnson Space Center. So at that time, European scientists used to come for uh, funding, internship, two months, three months program. And you might be knowing that NASA not only does research on space, but also they fund to academic program, they fund to industry. So under academic program, they used to come. So I saw that it has immediately two applications, but I did not go proceed further. What is uncertainty handling? Because of lower and upper approximation. And on the other hand, another is called granular computing. That we, I did not give the name granular computing that time, but I thought it's a playing with information granule I can play. Without looking at the individual X, I look at, at, the, at the granule sort. So now let me explain in the machine learning concept, what is the meaning of lower and upper, and what is the meaning of this information granule. So what is lower and upper approximation? Suppose this is a cluster. In our machine learning point of view, it's a class. Now we know that in this cluster, points inside the centroid, close to centroid, we have no ambiguity regarding the decision. Only decision ambiguity comes from this shaded region. So I can, in the light of Rapset theory, I can say this is my lower approximation, and this plus this together is called upper approximation. And upper minus lower is by boundary. So this is lower, upper, etc. Similarly, I can define the cluster roughness in terms of cardinality of lower divided by cardinality of upper. So if, if lower equal to upper, then roughness will be zero. As I mentioned, if there is no granularity, then roughness lower will be equal to upper, then one minus one equal to zero. Now, given this cluster definition, if you look at this, Professor Paula, in his theory, considered set and the granules both crisp. But in real life problem, either of them or both can be overlapping or both could be fuzzy. For example, in an image when you play, if you have a three by three window, you consider as a granule, the three by three window could be discrete, three by three could be overlapping. Similarly, in a gray image, the definition of object is fuzzy because you do not know where is the boundary. Therefore, the set could be fuzzy as well as the granules could be fuzzy. Now, if one of them is fuzzy, the lower and upper approximation will be fuzzy set. If both of them are crisp, then and only then the lower and upper approximation will be, will be a crisp set. Otherwise, if one of them, that is either granule or set is fuzzy, the lower and upper approach will be fuzzy. And, and fuzzy sets are nothing but membership function. So lower and upper membership, upper approximation sets will be represented by membership function. And that will determine our generalized rough set. I will explain later on. And this provides a stronger model of uncertainty and link, stronger in the sense that it takes care of uncertainty due to overlapping regions, uncertainty from granularity. But again, we are not considering uncertainty from 
arising from probability of occurrence of an event. If you take care of that on the top of this, then it will be even more powerful. Now let's, before defining this generalized entropy, I explained F in function granule with an example. What is F in function granule? Suppose this is an uh, object or a concept or region, whatever you think. This is my granulated domain, just example. Low, medium, you can consider it crisp also. You can consider one. So given this data set or region or concept, whether it is labeled or unlabeled, that means whether you know its class of origin or you do not know, rough set has a capability of approximating in terms of this rectangle. That means first feature is medium and second feature is medium. Simple. And this is what is called information granule, which provides good description of the class. Basically, it's a lower approximation. So even if his data is labeled or unlabeled. Now, this is a toy example. Now, in case if you have an elongated cluster, then you will have more than one such granule. So if the elongated cluster, that will result more than one such granule. And case generation here, interesting is that it is a toy example. That's why both features F1 and F2 have appeared. But I'll show some examples where all of the features will not appear. That is, the rule itself shows dimensionality reduction. So, and this is possible here, we call it variable dimension reduction. That is, if you have, depending on the topology of the classes in the feature space, topology of the regions in the feature space, all regions may not require same number of dimension to represent. That is what's called variable dimension reduction. Example, Irish data. It's a very uh, fast data every machine learning guy download on. What do you have? You have three flowers. Cetrosa, Versicola, Virginica, and 50 flowers from each class. And these are the four features, Sepalle, they one. Now, if you have worked with this, you must have seen that the two flowers are overlapping and the other is well separated. For example, if you look at the sepal length, sepal width, sepal length, petal length, sepal length, petal width, you see that two flowers are overlapping. That means it is obvious intuitively that for this flower, you do not need four features. Only one feature is enough. So on an average, you know a required four features in order to store the three classes. And that is what is reflected when you compare with uh, instance-based learning, there is a, a famous highly cited paper of David Aha from US Naval Lab. And this is a modified version, but he, uh, reduced dimension is same dimension. But here dimension reduction is same. But in the proposed method, as I mentioned, the rough set one, uh, dimension reduction is variable. And this is random selection that you pick up one flower from each class. So for three classes, if you flower three, and if you see that average number of features required per flower, to represent 2.5 for the other you need all four features and even with this 2.5 your classification accuracy for classifying the other flowers it is maximum on this one and as because it is average number of features required to store is minimum therefore retrieval time is minimum however the generation time is second because random method picks up a flower randomly just one so is generation time is of both zero. There are so many examples. So this shows that it has variable dimension reduction, less storage requirement, fast re retrieval. Therefore, it must be useful for mining large data with dimension. So it has obvious application to data compression, knowledge encoding for, for neural network formation, case-based reasoning, and image segmentation. Why image segmentation clustering? Because it is unsupervised. You do not know the number of clusters. But if you use these rough granules on this data, then you have some rough information granules. And the number of information granules that you get that can be considered as equal to the number of initial clusters. A new start cluster. So it has wide application. Now I will explain the generalized rough set. As I mentioned, 
or self power definition, seed is crisp and the granules are crisp. Now I will show if the set is fuzzy, granules is crisp, set is crisp, granule is fuzzy, and both are fuzzy, they do not give rise to a rough set. Then if the set is fuzzy, it will give a rough fuzzy set. If the set is crisp, but the granule is fuzzy, it will say that uh, the fuzzy rough sets, and if both are granule, it will, it will give rise to fuzzy rough fuzzy sets. Now let's see two extreme cases when both are crisp and the both are fuzzy, how do the lower and upper approximation look like? This is the ideal case, crisp one-dimensional representation, set crisp, and these are granule crisp. I can see that black line, one, two, three, four, five, these five granules, they definitely belong to this set. So, this black line and this green line, they constitute lower approximation of this set X. Where is the fifth, sixth granule? One, two, three, four, six granule possibly belong, and others do not. So five plus one, six together, they constitute what is called upper approximation. So the black line, green line, black, red, they constitute together what is called rough set of the set X. Now come to maximum. Granules are overlapping. Set is fuzzy as characterized by membership also. Here you see that lower approximation is an oblique staircase to the other case. So if you, depending on your complexity of the problem, how much you have to pay and how and to what extent you can compromise with your uh, solution, Depending on that, you can go one by one. And when you have this one, you compute the roughness. How do you copy this? Is this a fuzzy set? So you take the cardinality of this fuzzy set. Cardinality of this fuzzy set. So I compute the cardinality of fuzzy set lower, cardinality of upper, and this is my roughness measure. And similarly, I compute the entropy based on logarithmic gain function, based on exponential gain. But what does it mean? Suppose the probability occurrence of an element is pi, the amount of ignorance is one divided by pi, and we, arguably we can say it is one minus pi. So if you take one by pi, you go by logarithmic function, one minus pi, you go by exponential function. So it is the roughness of this set x and this complement set b. So x, this is the diagram of entropy. If you take the cross section, that means roughness of A equal to B, then you get this function. So this is A means set X and B means complement set. So this entropy, it basically quantifies the incompleteness of knowledge about the universe with respect to definability of the set X. And it basically measures the gain in incompleteness. Gain in incompleteness. Therefore, our objective will be to minimize. So it has immediate application for any data analysis, granular mining thing for handling, whether it is a bio informed data or, e or image data, astrophysical, whatever data you need, whether it is a small, medium size or big size, some overlapping is in inherent. So whatever there is, uncertainty arising from overlapping concept, uncertainty arising from limited information, that means discernibility, because of the truncated feature space, that you can use this concept. Let's consider first, so we have so many applications for the last 10 years, video tracking, bioinformatics, link prediction problem, neural learning network. Now let's consider only these two applications here. Yeah. I may not get time. So video tracking, and I will explain the role of granules, granulation, lower approximation. What is lower approximation? That's the obvious set, no doubt, and information measure. Now, basically, before that, I will ask our young uh, students and colleagues who are listening, when you go, you first ask yourself, why I will go for, for rough fuzzy entropy, sir, for image? This is very simple. Look at this sinusoidal uh, gray image. 
So here, it is difficult to say what is the bound. So that signifies the application of fuzzy shape theory. Similarly here, you see, as I mentioned before, according to Weber's law, naked eye cannot discriminate six consider, by one to six, two to seven, three to eight, cannot be. So this constitutes the concept of diffusion. Similarly, any pixel in the image processing, that is one of the basic concepts, we assume that any pixel tends to attain its intensity value as, as close to its neighboring intensities. So there is a concept of rough resemblance between nearby pixels, rough resemblance between nearby labels, as you found. So that signifies why I will go for the end. Now, when you talk about uh, segmentation, segmentation is a very unsolved problem, it's because it's a clustering unsolvable problem. Uh, and we have one paper in the board that is highly cited. The segmentation work, I started working at Imperial College. But that time in India or in many developed countries, uh, laboratories, image processing was a very uh, expensive uh, things to do. But at Imperial College, uh, Nobel laureate, that time he didn't get Abdul Salam. He was in physics lab. He was doing something and I started working with physics. So minimizing entropy, basically min minimizing uncertainty. And minimizing uncertainty means incompleteness of knowledge. Therefore, if I can minimize my entropy as I defined before, that implies maximization of object background separation. That means immediate application to object extraction in image or in a clustering problem, partitioning the, the clusters. And tracking means basically video. Video means sequence of image frame. So if you can make good partitioning of the object from background in every frame, then segmentation, will be, then tracking will be obviously better. This is one way of tracking. There are other ways of tracking I'll explain. So now I'll show the effect of now, before uh, I show the example, next question comes, how to find the granules here? Simple granules, you take an image, you make three by three window, four by four window, six by six window. That is one kind of granule. Another could be unequal size. How do you find an unequal size? Obviously, unequal size is more uh, realistic than equal size granule. And it's a little expensive also. Say, take an image, you make it, quadrant decomposition, that you make it split into four quadrants. And then you compute maximum intensity minus minimum intensity. If the maximum minus minimum exceeds a threshold, that means that is not homogeneous. So you split that quadrant again in, in just four quadrants. So that's how you carry on whenever that condition is satisfied. So we can take these unequal granules by quadrant decomposition and we consider different equal size granule, four by four, six by six, etc. So that gives my special segmentation based on apogee entropy. Now for tracking, I need to have the temporal segmentation because you get sequence of frames. So for that, I buy it from the market, compute three point background estimation and I fuse them and then see the results. If you take six by six entropy, six by six entropy, four by four entropy, look at the tracking, the tracker is just coming out of the object in just many several frames. So that means in some frames good, some frames bad. If you do this one, this is even worse. This is worse. Or shows not graduation, but still it is coming out. But where is the unequal values? Is the performance frame. This is just a simple example I tried to show what is the difference between granules. Now let's come to the next one. Here I used the regular shaped granules, that means four by four, three by three quadrants, and define the entropy or segmenting image in order to track in one. Now I will show granules of arbitrary shape and size that is more natural. That you take an image. You find this close proximity for neighbors in terms of color symmetry. If it exceeds a threshold, then you stop. Otherwise, you connect the color. So it is called region growing. So I'll show how lower and upper absorption are used for granules of upper and arbitrary size and shear, for rule-based classification and prediction. 
in our supervised learning. Former one was based on segmentation. Here I go classification, and these are all unsupervised. Tracking in, in ambiguous situation, I will explain the concept of granular flow graph, new concept of rough filter, and granular deep learning. Because today, without deep learning, no lecture is complete. So granular flow arbitrary shape, we take RGB, finite data sets, we form three-dimensional spatial dimension color, two-dimensional by region coding. So what do we do basically? It is already unsupervised. So I take the lower approximation as my object model. I do not need to have any kind of partial information. So I extract, I will show how lower approximation and object model. And on this one, based on this one, I form the, we form the granules. We, we do not use any pixel linearly information, all granule level information. And granular level rule-based decision, automatic updation by rule-based with flow graph, and application to overlapping objects, newly appeared objects, that you are tracking one object, suddenly another object appears, multi-objects moving in different directions in different speed. So what is lower approximation? Suppose the lady is doing uh, exercise at time t. If t minus t on frame, you take the temporal difference, that is the simple difference, you get this info. That means this is the moving region. T minus two, you get this. T minus three, you get this. You can take more, but it will be expensive. So having this temporal domain information, you take the union intersection. Now I see that this is the region which will be always in the moving object, no matter from here to here, you are to. So this I call lower approximation. And this is done in depth information space. And these values are, represent the core values of the object model. And these values determine the extent to which these values could be tolerated to expand. So based on this local, this medium, uh, lower approximation in the medium plane, I compute the clusters. So suppose this is the lower approximation in the median plane. Why take median plane? Because median is more robust. So then we plot this, we have this uh, uh, arbitrary shaped granules formed by region growing method. So some granules are overlapping, some granules are non overlapping. So after having this granule, you see that one, this is the representative point, the two dimensional special color dangles, and this is the third dimension where you go with the temporal domain. This is the granule, similarly. Similarly here, similar one. So having this granular information, third dimension, this and this together, they constitute third, three dimension. But you take the only this third dimension information. This is tau domain. You go back to the T domain, FT domain. There you get the RGB and depth. So RGB, one component, depth one component and this temporal domain component. Based on this, you have this granule. Granule means basically you have set, set. In terms of set, you have rule base, and then you form the rule base in temporal domain, RGB depth model of three-dimensional neighbor granules, and update the rule base with flow graph. What is flow graph? It is a basically maps the decision path of the granular rule base. And since you are using granular uh, rule base, we call it granular program. This is called the intelligent machine, intelligent way of updating because it updates for a particular feature, not all features at a time, and only when required, instead of every time and for all features. So it only updates a particular feature at a time whenever required, and for a particular granule, not for every time. That's why it's called intelligent. So the lady was doing exercise with her right hand, now uh, without updation. See, left moving, so tracker is not able to track it. Second one, when we use this granular flow graph, tracker is used to do this. Similarly, there are multiple people moving in different directions in different speed. 
it is a reflection of the window and shadow is not detected because we are, because we are using depth information now next time showing the when there are complete overlapping or occlusion and here we are use the concept of same in the tau space temporal domain and we are use the basic concept of defined a neighborhood rough set filter which estimates location and color model of the object in terms of lower and upper approximation. So it gives two output, lower and upper so of the object models, location. And these information are then used to model the nature of variation in the next frame based on their speed, size, direction, and so on. And object decisions with minimum roughness because every decision taken in terms of lower and upper. Lower and upper, we, when it is a uh, low roughness, we track it. If roughness is high, that means object is occluded. So we compute intuitionistic entropy that takes care of the overlapping object, that takes care of the amount of importance of the boundary pixel in the object model, as well as the probability of it being to the predicted region. It handles particle. Now, what is input output of this neighborhood rough filter? Suppose you take the frame T and you take the difference between T minus 1, T minus 2, T minus 3, T minus 4, T minus P and take, you take its union. It's called it delta. So you get one matrix, image matrix. Now, you take T to T minus 1, T minus 1 to T minus 2, T minus 2 to T minus 3, T minus 2 to 3 and so on, T minus P. So, you get P frames. Now we take this one to P point convolution. One to P point convolution. It will give a P point matrix, but we will have two P point output matrix representing lower and upper. And here, lower and upper, and convolution operator is used union and intersection. When you use intersection, this gives a lower approximation. And when you use upper approximation, you take those granules from upper approximation which have non-empty intersection with lower approximation. And they constitute what is called upper approximation. So you take minimum, that the intersection operator, that the minimum value, you get the lower. Then use the upper, that is maximum and take only those gamuts out of those upper output which have non-empty intersection with lower. So that's how you get lower and upper estimates of these objects based on this P previous frames. Example, this is three frames, P equal to three, P equal to three, lower approximation out. That is definitely belonging to the object model, definitely as well as possibly belong. When you compute the performance measure of neighborhood filter, simple borrowing idea from electrical engineering, cardinality of lower, cardinal upper minus lower. And if you look at this cardinality of lower, you can consider it's an obvious set, the signal of amplitude, and this is the boundary set, which is the probable set, possible set, it's called amplitude of the noise set. And higher signal to noise is desirable, low value means poor performance. Now, if it is a low value, what do you do? You make it uh, larger or you make it lower. So, in order to make it larger, that means the cardinality has to be increased. That means the threshold value for detecting the granules has to be decreased. Whereas here is to be increased. Now, even after changing those thresholds, lower and upper which is the saturated and signal to noise is not so good they do increase the now number of frames if it is three we hit five it is a p p plus two and so on and after having this you model the nature of variation in size speed and direction and using those granules you find the approximate decision in the t plus one region in terms of lower and upper and compute object roughness Simple concept one minus cardinal lower divided by upper. And if it's low, object is clear. If it's 
then the object is uploaded, and then you compute intrinsic entropy on the boundary granules only. That means those granules which belong to the object model but not completely belong to the predicted region. And to we ensure that they are presence in the object set. That is, we minimize the boundary say, and, and and what does this uh, does this intrinsic entropy say? It takes care of the two points together. One is this boundary granules, what is its importance in the object model, and what is the, its probability of being in the, in, the, in the predicted region. Because based on this, we reduce the minimization, and then we put this object model once to the granule, to the object set, and one to its complement set, and compute the entropy. And if the entropy for the object set is less than the object for the for the complementary set, then we consider that putting in the object it reduces the uncertainty. Therefore, it must go to the to the object model. Otherwise, background. So keeping on this, we see that it's a London Metro. Sorry. Frame per second 15, six frames. Complete occlusion. This is based on prediction. Previous one was based on rule-based classification. Earlier one because based on segmentation. Suddenly, suddenly that guy had changed his speed. It's a laboratory. I will use it all again. Now, that's one example to uh, bioinformatics because other one. So, simple example of microRNA ranking cancer. What is the problem here? In our decision making problem that we have learned since 1975 is one that sample size should be much, much larger than the dimension number of features. That's how we started working in the 70s for the, the speech data. But now we see that other way number of microRNAs, few hundreds. But the number of patients, 10, 20, 21. Because you do not go to hospital unless you are sick. So the sample size bulb, top study. So those theories you cannot use. Now let's see, this is the challenging issues. It's called large dimension, small sample problem that is being handled by statistics also. Now here the problem is that you are said is cancer or not. There is a crisp. There is no fuzzy. Yes. Either a man is cancerous or not. But canals are fuzzy. So you use rough. And here we use the concept of lower approximation because it indicates the severity of obvious, normal obvious cancer. And those are used to find the relative frequency that the probability of definite and doubtful region for completion. So I'll show this very uh, simple method. This is my crisp boundary set, but the granules are overlapping. So I take every microRNA for M1. These are my cancer, this is my normal. For every element, I compute the membership for cancer, M1. Normalized membership so that membership of any patient to normal cancer addition is next one. Now I take the lower approximation. I take the minimum of this membership value of and one if the element, if the patient is normal. And if the patient is a cancerous patient, minimum with the membership value for normal and zero. So then it will be always zero. Similarly, for normal cancerous class, I got it. And they indicate the degree of being sure to be normal in cancer. Then they compute the cardiality, that means the frequency. And based on the frequency, we compute their total average, mean cardiality or lower upper approximation, and lambda, and one minus lambda equal to cardiality of the upper region. So for that object and the top dimension set. And this is my logarithmic entropy. If you use simple expression, you see that 
when for a particular microRNA, this entropy value decreases, it means separability between normal and cancer with respect to this microRNA increases. That is, relevance of the microRNA for cancer classification is more. Based on this concept, we will compare this six kind of data sets. Here yeah, is a 309, is a, for example, number of microRNAs, 19, the patient. These are the microRNAs patients. You take classification using standard support vector machine so that just no one can argue. And you see that all this one, I take the 1% as marked by the yellow line. And you see that 1% microRNA that gives higher F score. What is F score? F score maximizes both sensitivity and species. That means maximizing F score means you, you maximize that the cancer patient should be treated as cancerous. Normal patient should be treated as normal. So you see that 1% microRNA gives high recognition. What does it mean? That the other microRNAs, they are not relevant for this cancer detection problem. They may have other significance, but here when you compute with others, they create misses. They have no values. That is excessive. That's why that is the basic concept of our machine learning, learning pattern. They shall also increase the number of, the, of features, not necessarily with enhance the number of the classification accuracy. Sometimes it reduces the classification accuracy. So this is a toy example. I gave it, but there are many other results. So what is the summary? It's a different machine learning tools, basically. I've explained. I have only uh, demonstrated the significance in video analytics problem and bioinformatics, but you can go for our recent work which pub it was published in, it's a drug resistant microRNA. PBS1 was microRNAs we are responsible for, for cancer, but there are also microRNAs who are just resistant to drug. Similarly, neural network generation, social link prediction, these are typical problems where calculation has been found. In, in the social link prediction also, overlapping is obvious. Now, where are the basic leading to? Because when you do research, to our young uh, researcher, I might say, you keep at least five to seven years ahead of uh, time that where they are going to use. Now here I see that there are at least three significance. Completion theory of perception, natural computing, and big data analytics. Theoretical computer theory of perception. What is computer theory of perception? You, you compute based on the perception, not based on the measurements that we do. For example, when you drive a car, you use the perception of distance, space, uh, likelihood, sense, and etc. You don't measure everyone. And perception. It's it attribute values are granules, slightly left, slightly right, not so speedy, slow, high, etc. And uh, because of the limited resolution capability of human brain and other organs, perceptions are imprecise. So if granularity characteristics can be used as a vehicle for bodily complex theory of perception. Similarly. We have also studied that perception granules in natural language processing, for example, subject, predicate, belief, and so on. I'm not going to details, etc. Natural computing, because as I mentioned, granulation is like cell uh, uh, production, cell generation, evolution, morphogenesis, which are abstracted from natural. Uh, phenomena. Similarly, if granulation is inherent in human thinking and reasoning process, therefore it is very crucial in human cognition. That is big data healthy, mainly from uncertainty analysis and granular computing point of view. Now, uncertainty handling, for example, now today COVID, you have seen that there are many projects I saw for DST, is for detection and screening from X-ray and the CT scanning. Obviously, you're handling with some image, so it will be very economical and fast also. 
Second thing is a deep learning. Because today, again, it's a buzzword, deep learning, deep learning. Now, once you go for deep learning, you need enough samples, you know. So, and when you need so many samples, computation time becomes a problem. So, reducing computation time has become an issue. Here, we see, can see that there's just initial step. Granulation can help. For example, if you have worked with CNN, now everybody is working with CNN, CNN. I will explain later on what is the problem. So instead of scanning, scanning the entire image pixel by pixel is the conventional layer of deep learning, you jump over the granules, that you make the granules first. Two-dimensional special color granules, for example. So if you have 32 by 32 image with N granules, Sliding the filter with, will require only n times instead of 32 times. But n is less than mass. Therefore, significant speed up is observed, of course, compromising with some accuracy. Simple example use your CNN and the data without uh, granulation and with different kinds of granulation, three by three granulation, rectangular granules arbitrary shape granules. You see that using CPU, don't go by the GPU yet, because all are used for CPU. 1.6 frames per second, here frame size is, speed is increasing, but tracking speed is also reducing, accuracy also reducing. Now let's compute this only these two, 1 1.6, 1.89, 82.25, 82. And then see how do they look like, the same, laboratory data, see the thing, percentage is fine. Percentage of objects, uh, recognition of objects, persons, overlapping, overlapping also, be, uh, also being taken, taken care of. Again, I'm showing the accuracy of object, static object at the other moving objects. So now let's go, come to the evolution. My, uh, 45 years experience, one. when we started working, you see pattern recognition in 70s. But if you go to the Google search, it, first paper I saw in 1960. And Professor Case Fu from Party of the Father. Then in 70s, image processing started. I moved to Imperial College, I started working there, Imperial Image Processing. Then after 10 years about artificial intelligence, Machine learning expositive become a buzzword. 1980s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Then neural networks started coming again, reappearing. Re JDG algorithm appeared. The knowledge based system, 1990s, based on Japanese scholars. Then India also had five big centers, including ISI. Calcutta one, other one is IIT Madras, Kanpur, India of Science at Bombay. The data mining, 2000, we talked about. The big data, 2010, just about a decade, you see. Now we are talking about data science, data science, data science. And when you talk about the data science, you have to listen to this. You have to be very, very careful. So it was required because when we started working in pattern notion in 70s, the feature selection problem, just take an example. That time we had a few hundreds of samples and three to four features. And how did you publish paper in item transaction? Then you take different combination of those features, two together, three together, and one, and see which feature makes best clustering among the samples. That means separate unitivity clusters is more. But now today, this is a paper, highly cited paper, Pami. If you look at this, features are uncorrelated. Most of them, uncorrelated. And the number of features is few thousands. Number of samples, few tens or few hundreds. So what do you do there? So you make the clustering among the feature space instead of the sample space. And within the clustering affair you make it, you take the same of each cluster and throw it around. So you reduce from few thousands to few tens or, or, or even few hundreds. 
that's how you make the dimensionality reduction after 80. So whatever you publish before 80s, you cannot use them straight forward for today, any kind of data mining problem, because now data characteristic has changed. This is just an example I saw. So new terms and technologies are coined with lots of big hope, because our deep learning is one such one. But with very caution. Why is caution? Say in 80s, we remember in 80s, we, when we started working in neural network, that was a boom. Everybody is uh, publishing neural network conference, Department of Science and Technology, India, they paid good amount of money, et cetera, et cetera. I was at NASA. We also started working from uh, uh, from Calcutta. In the early stage, we published very good papers. I did, I did neural network. But then uh, within the 10, 12 years, subject died. There are many transactions, neural network, ITP transaction, neural network changed the name to learning system that they are publishing in uh, supplementary machine. Neuro competing, neural networks, Gosberg Journal, they don't get paper because people expected too much out of neural network without looking at the So therefore, if you want to learn data science, you have to, if you want to learn deep learning, you have to learn shallow learning, machine learning. If you have to want to learn machine learning, you have to know neural learning. And if you have to know neural learning, you have to know pattern recognition, because that is the mother subject. So without knowing the mother subject, if you jump on neural network, subject two has done, I don't think, I do not expect our young generation to do the same mistake. Now I'm seeing all everywhere, deep learning, deep learning, without understanding, take a model, you write it and publish it. So this is my caution. With this one, I conclude that this is our recent book that will be appearing in February 2021, the related video competing with RAPSA deep learning and in IoT. With this, I acknowledge my students. I have worked mostly with my students and in our colleagues in India and abroad. And I acknowledge the current national science chair that I am holding from ACRB, DST, Government of India. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, go on. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so there are a few questions. I request my co-panelist, uh, Dr. Gitika, to kindly ask those questions. Uh, thank you so much, Manoj. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, the first question is from... Uh, Dhanesh Solanki, he asks, uh, can you give some insight for C fuzzy for dimension reduction for clustering C fuzzy mean? Sorry, sorry, I, I didn't, didn't get the word. Yes, I know the, the fuzzy C means clustering, yes. Yes, yes, uh, sir, I'm repeating the question. Can you give some insight for C fuzzy for dimension reduction for clustering? Yes. This is the question. C fuzzy mean. Fuzzy fuzzy C means. Yes. Fuzzy, fuzzy C, C fuzzy mean. He's saying C fuzzy means. No, no, it's okay. This is called actually just C means algorithm. Uh -huh, C means C algorithm. algorithm. And then uh, when you see uh, uh, extended version, the fuzzy C means. Somebody says C fuzzy means. C, yeah, fuzzy sure. C means is basically it's just clustering algorithm. Uh, C, uh, class, C means algorithm means hard. Uh, Hard clustering, either a pattern belongs to a set or just does not belong, zero or one. But then we saw in our 75s after uh, fuzzy set theory was explained in 65 by Professor Lapizade, who has passed away three years before that days of 96, that any pattern cannot have only origin from one class. It can have more than one class origin. Therefore. It gave rise to the generalization called fuzzy C. Which is basically, if you have C class problem and n samples, it's a C by n matrix. Every element indicates its degree of belonging to a particular class, and that uh, summation of belonging to every class may be sum to one. So even if we make this, if we have a have a just centroid point, and then from centroid point, you can just throw your others. You keep only. A few of the just centroid point keep to them whose membership value say get at the point eight, point nine, and so on, depending on your need. And then that's how you can just reduce the 
just the dimension. For example, if you go for a hard clustering, then you just only only just take the centroid point. But in case of fuzzy clustering, you can con can consider say threshold against 0.75, threshold against 0.8, and so. So depending on your need, you can. Is that okay to address your question? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, the next question is: What happens when uh, SNR is really large? I mean, signal to noise ratio is really large. Yes, I told that signal to noise ratio is large is desirable. That means that means it is a uh, that means your roughness is very low. That means your object penetrated object is correct. So you just uh, just uh, 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 Track it. When it is low, that is the problem. When you're low, then you have to adjust these parameters. And even if it doesn't go uh, to increase, then you take this the number of frames. Because number of frames, if you consider only five, that five has, has a certain amount of information based on which you have the model. Now, if it, if it is doesn't go uh, signal resolution go doesn't go high, then you are not able to track. So then you increase number of frames five to seven. Uh, sir, the next question is: uh, Can miRNA detect cancer at early stage? And uh, the B part is: Is membership pattern distinguishable enough for normal and early stage cancerous patients? Yes. Uh, see, uh, uh, these are all dependent on the expression help. Uh, uh, microarray data, micro, uh, microarray technology use, expression values. Yes, here it is a supervised system. You know the normal patients, you know the cancer patients. Whether it is a normal or not, that is not actually our job. That is a dog of the uh, biologist medical officer. He has been designated as normal, he has been designated as cancer. Now, our task is to find, to support. The medical practitioner or the biologist that which of the microRNAs are responsible for cancer because there are a few hundreds or thousands. It is not possible for biologists to study all of them. So if we can help them by reducing to one percent, so out of six hundred to only just six, then biologists can put more money on the test and then does it work. Because that depends on the expression value. That is not our job. We get only the expression values. Yes, that expression values that causes the overlapping. That overlapping has been just taken care of. The overlapping comes because of the expression values. Did you just did you get the point? Because if yes. you if it is a clear cut, then there will be no, no overlap, overlapping with, with normal and cancer. That overlapping granules that I showed. That is because of this expression values. That the same expression values you have for a normal patient, same expression value you have got a cancer patient. Whether where those two patients have been identified by doctors as normal and cancer. So my task is to find whether that microRNA is, is a very good detector or not. Obviously, that microRNA will not be a just, just good just detector. I am only showing which six, which one percent microRNAs are better as compared to the entire just set of of, of the 600 microns. Okay. Sir, uh, yeah. the, uh, yeah, shall you, I tell ask me. you the next question? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you have already given the answer to this question also, but uh, let me repeat that. Uh, how can cancer cells are differentiated with cyst or tumor in images? It, in images, it actually depends how do you just, just grab them. <coughs> in images, it's just a different story. That's why you have got MRI data. Then that's why you have got X-ray image. Because all kinds of penetrating power, reflecting power is different. So it depends on what kind of radiation or what kind of scanner you are using. If and only if they have, have, have significant change in the intensity values because other than intensity, you don't have anything. You have only color and intensity values. Other than that, you don't have anything. It is just two dimensional. Unless you have gotten now three dimensional. So, given a two dimensional, 
in H, what intrusion you have. Only color value and the intensity values. So intensity value, depending on the type of cancer, that's why you use different kinds of, of radiation. That's why you use for uh, tomography, uh, CT scan, X-ray image. Why it is so similar? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the next question so is... In, see, mind you one thing. Information has to be there. If yes, any sir. information is lost, then there is then a you can't do anything about uh, it. You can try best to get in information based on the available neighborhood information and other information. You can highlight the information. If it is occluded, you can get it out. If it is completely lost, it is very difficult. Still, we are trying to get it because of the best of the neighboring information. If it is neighboring information, you can get it. Suppose there are 10 pixels around. 10 intensity and then one pixel has got one or two then either it is a salt and paper noise or or just maybe it is an error yes yes sir uh, so the next question is by professor arvind kumar he asks is my rna evaluation concept of small sample applicable to all types of cancer example for lung liver breast cancer etc Sorry, sorry, I didn't get the point. Uh, okay, let me repeat that. Is my, yeah. MI is RNA evaluation concept of small sample applicable to all types of cancer? Example no, no. for lung, liver, breast cancer, etc. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm just cutting the point. These are data available in the uh, website. Because, because you, you do not get those data. Hospitals will not just give you those. So these are the data available. So here you see that uh, the six types of cancerous data I have shown is a binary data, cancerous and normal, cancerous and normal, about 300 to 600, that's the number of cases. That's this availability. Uh, there could be many more microarrays, but, but, uh, but these are not available to us. And the number of patients we cannot control, as I mentioned to you, that you, whenever you are sick, only then and only then you go to hospital for your giving a sample of blood. Otherwise, normal people do not go to, to what. So whatever technology I have given, it can be used for any kind of. It's very simple. You take one by one microRNA, and you since it is a uh, supervised system, you have got labeled information. It's not our label. So based on this label information, you find their membership. You find the lower approximation surety. If, it, if the if the uh, set changes, then the membership value will be also changing. Cardinal ID will be changing. Then you complete. So it's a very simple. Now you can take two microarrays together, joint uh, joint just probability of occurrence that can give you a little better results also. But this is a, because microRNA research is relatively new as compared to your gene selection. microRNA is relatively new. Now, similarly, uh, drug-resistant microRNA, because you are not getting the data. This is the, this is the problem. If you get the data, then the data analysis, machine learning guy, they can develop the algorithm. Unless you get the data, how can you find it? Same yeah, sure, thing sir. about just modeling of uh, this COVID also. We are not getting some type of true data in India. In India, data is underreported. So don't think that it's a god, it's a black box, it's all. Just like neuron, it's a black box. No, 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 nothing is black box. If it's a supervised system, then problem is somewhere. If it's unsupervised, problem is elsewhere. For example, it's unsupervised means you are given the entire data, but you do not know which class they have come from, how many classes are there. This is, on the other hand, it's a supervised system, you are given a sample information. But you are asked to identify the other classes, other data, which are not considered in the design set. So based on a simple set of, sample set of information, you are trying to extrapolate the boundary. That is the challenging issue for supervised system. So here the data I have used, that is the data. Yes, if you have a large number of uh, genes, yeah, microRNAs, yes, it will be valid. But I will prefer if you have more number of samples. 
because that will give you much more valid valid result. That is the that is the that is the challenging issues for the last more than a decade decade because all decision theory that we started uh, reading and developing since 1970s, the basic assumption number of samples is much much greater than the number of attributes. All the searching decision theory, but now it is uh, top set up. It's a because here the, here the features are now uncorrelated. When you go to a medical doctor, hospital, what do you give? Patient's name, which community has come from, your blood group, parents' name, this, this, tic tac, some uh, these are cross, something are numerical, some these are integer. So it is a heterogeneous data, and many of the features are not required to classify between cancerous and non cancerous because they did not upload the data as because some machine learning guy will use. It is your headache for your survival in, in just a scientific community to find some data and then just validate your model. Did you get my point? So, yes, sir. The data is uncorrelated. That's why upset theory becomes so important. Other non parametric algorithms where you do not need to know the distribution of samples because samples are scattered here and there, they are not large in number, they do not follow some distribution also. But you have to just solve the problem. This is called engineering approximation. That's why physiology, neural network, upset, they become so popular because it gives approximate solution. Look at this uh, the case series which I showed you. Low, low, low. This is an approximate result. And most of the data mining problem, you do not need precise result. You need an approximate solution. And based on the approximate solution, if you want to get the exact value, then you better start from that point the computation time will be reduced. Instead of knowing that if you start from the perfect solution from the beginning, then it will be a long time. That's why these approximate methodologies, they have come forward. That's the example I gave you, the information granules, by rectangle, that is an approximate version. And most of the data mining problems, big data issue, you need an approximate solution, fast solution to them. Okay, sir. Uh, I'll take up the last two questions. The first one is how to improve the explainability in deep learning, especially when we are using big data analysis. Uh, because, because uh, yes, this is a challenging uh, research point. We are also 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 working on the issue. But you, you think that way. If you have worked in neural network, don't expect too much. Uh, in our group, we worked with uh, my one of my uh, former PhD uh, students. Now, now actually, she is a big professor, Sushmita Mitra. In her thesis, you give a neural network, trained linguistic input output, and then from output to input, you propagate back and then find the reason. So, what is the reason for having this kind of decision? Because you have input disabilities. For example, when you go to a doctor, you ask the doctor, why this diagnosis? So the, then doctors explain you as because your temperature is not so low, pressure is high, and those that one. So this is called explainability, a cause. So based on the model, you are also thinking that for a deep network, how to do this? Otherwise, deep network will have, have a big problem in just a reality. So this is a current research area we are trying to have. It. But my student, my advice to him, don't think of the big data right now. Just use, take a simple data and you fix your network first. Don't buy a, a network from the market available. You design your network of your own. Design your network to your own. Don't expect that all network available will, will just solve all problems. Then it will be a recurrence of the what will happen in 80s for, for neural network. So your design of this, then you see increasing number of features means number of size or number of features. If it's number of features, then certain issue. If it's a number of volume, then it is another issue. So if it's a number of features, then you see whether it is a heterogeneity because big data means the main characteristics: size, volume, variety. Sorry, size, velocity, and variety. So velocity means in what speed you are coming. Variety and size means dimension. So dimension, you increase the dimension first C1, you increase the heterogeneity, and then C1. So it's not that easy job, the big data, what I do. 
big data, every component has its own uh, just research issue. So if the data is perfect or not, that is called veracity problem. That means finding the conformity of the data. So veracity will itself a big research issue because the data that you are getting, whether it is conforming to the fact or not. Because if it doesn't conform to the fact, then it's a useless sort of uh, the data. Understand the, my, my point? Yes, so big sir. Data is easy. Every component has its own challenging issues. That's why we could not do much. Now we are just moving towards deep learning and big data. Because scientists are very clever. They, you have to know next five years in what is the topic highlight. Then you can survive. Then as long as you say that you are not able to do much, then you stop and then move to another subject. That's what I, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling in the, my last evolution. We started about data mining, data mining, and data mining. We could not solve much problem. Then say big data, bigger because the Americans are rather addicting us. Because I mean, Americans had shortage of deep analytics. They have to depend with with China and India, India, and then India, India and China are also just following them. It, this, is, this is very very unfortunate. We could not solve many data mining problems yet. And then still we are bringing that big data. Now we are talking about after 10 years, data science, data science. We are bringing uh, IIT, all courses, BSTEC, BTEC, MTEC, data science, data science, data science, deep learning. If you, that's why my caution is everywhere. If you learn to deep learning, you have to learn the shallow learning. If you know the shallow learning, that means you have to learn neural networks. Without neural networks, the learning has no meaning. If you have to have neural networks, you have to know pattern recognition. That means basically clustering, classification, feature selection. Okay, sir. This is very interesting. Otherwise, yeah. you jump. Most of the research scholars I see today are publishing, publishing here and there. Because there are too many journals, too many, there is no uh, standardization. That's why I say yeah. veracity is a big problem itself. So my advice to him, don't think too much. The one You find your own model, you see the your data, whether it is working, what you would like to have. First of all, whether you need deep learning or not. If you want to deep learning, then you have too many samples. That's why big data has become popular now. You have got enough sample. But enough sample is easy to say, but difficult to handle. <laughs> difficult to handle. Yeah. Yes, so each, component, each component is a big research issue. So my suggestion to research scholar, you are doing a PhD or young researcher, is proceed slow by slow. You study, study. Don't go by the Google search and then take some uh, uh, notes from here and there. Then it will simply die. You start from a basic book of pattern recognition, the AI, neural network, basic book, you try to understand. Then you say, why you need deep learning? If any, with a shallow learning, you can solve the problem. Why do, why do you go for deep learning? Similarly, fuzzy set also, I told, I've been telling the one, don't go for fuzzy set unless the data demands that. If the data is increased, why do you go for this? Why do you, why do, why do you go for upset? These are expensive too. You have to compute membership always. You have to compute the law and upper approximation. This has beauty. It gives, gives approximate equation. But you have to know where to apply. If you do not know where to apply, then, then you only just blame the, uh, the technology. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'll take up the last question now. I have combined uh, two questions in one. The first one is, uh, can we use granular computing for system having incomplete or uh, less data availability where we may use ontology of the data sets to build the complete information? And the second one is, uh, can we apply granular computing for any use case having numerical or textual data? I mean, he is not, uh, I mean, uh, telling about the multimedia data. He's saying, can we uh, use it for numerical or textual data? Uh, the, uh, the second question I'm just taking first. Yes, for any kind of data, you have to understand the granularity in what sense. Granule means clump of indiscernibility in terms of similarity, proximity. So when you go for binary data, we go, do not go by the proximity, we go by the functionality. So in terms of functionality, how they are similar. And, and when you go for granularity, when you see that they cannot be discriminated so easily. So better take it as a granule. That's why one of the origin uh, genesis of granular computing is that in real life problem, there are many data set which are not discernible. You cannot tell one. 
and it is sometimes convenient to express them in terms of grandeur. That is, as a total concept. When we can, when I see an audience, set of girls, set of boys, and set of old men, etc. I do not go by the individually. I say, oh, girls, girls. So if I have interest in the girls, I can just only barricade that it is a girl. So for the second question, yes, any kind of system you can go granularity. If the dimension is reduced then the incompleteness you can instruct and when the data cannot be discriminated that is you can come the data. the first question what you said the first question first part is okay the, the first, first part is sir uh, i'm repeating that uh, can we use granular computing for systems having incomplete or low data availability where we may use ontology of the data sets to build the complete information. A complete yes. information. No, where the data is in, uh, overlapping. What, what you said, I couldn't get the point. The first question. Sir, where, where the uh, data is incomplete or the data availability is low. Ha, Can we use the ha, ontology ha, ha. of the data yes, sets yes, to build yes. the complete well, Yes, yes. Whenever data is incomplete, yes, you can use. Whenever data is included, but I will use that, as you said, will be then a better option. But you can use when the data is incomplete, whenever data has uh, overlapping character, you can discriminate. When the data size is low, I am not actually sure. Because these are all basically for mining data. Yes, if you have what is, the, what is your objective that depends? If you have a low data, number of data, but you want to extract the number of relevant features out of, say, the few thousand features, then obviously the offset can be used. Then obviously the offset can be used. Did you get my point? Suppose you have got yes, sir, low number yes. of samples, small number of samples, but your problem is to find the number of relevant uh, features out of say few hundreds because your sample number sample is small but dimension is large or say dimension is medium and your task is to identify the relevant features that is called knowledge discovery then rough set because rough set that type of work granular granulation work was not used by professor uh, uh, he used the word granule, but not granular computing. So Rafset started working for application in knowledge discovery in terms of extracting the relevant features out of a number of features which are not correlated, which are uncorrelated. So even the number of samples is small, that is useful. That's why they, they have asked us, they started the work. If you look at any just uh, Rafset theoretic book, but for other activities, wherever you need large data, then their granular computing cannot help right now. now. That is all for, from my side, sir. Thank, Thank you so much for, much for explaining so Thank comprehensively. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Paul. Uh, this, these 90 minutes, they have been really exhibiting for all of us, where you have explained right from the basics to the very advanced concepts and uh, your lecture must have been a very guiding force for all the attendees, those who have just joined or they are in maybe an advanced stage of their research or PhDs or their MTech dissertations and even for the faculty members who will be guiding the students in this particular area. So before I conclude the session, any uh, remarks from your side, then I'll conclude the session, how, how the session has been. And oh, no, 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 the session actually, actually, uh, I didn't actually just see the audience. So actually, I yeah. don't know, know <laughs> how many have attended this talk. And then yeah, I'm sure many of, them, uh, many, uh, many of them must have listened to me. Now, yeah. since, since it is for younger researchers, my always advice is that uh, uh, you should work very hard. That is, uh, firstly, no, no just shortcut. Shortcut doesn't give any kind of uh, solution. It's, it may give a short time addition. This is one thing. Second thing is that uh, you change the topics, focus of the research after after five to seven years regularly. It's easy to say, but it's not uh, not uh, difficult also because you have to up to date always, up to date. Then and only then you'll be in the just forefront 
you bring ideas, etc. Then after 10 hours, you leave the subject. Let others follow. Then you pick up a, a subject. So you are giving, you are always in the front side, etc. And another thing, when if, if it's a deadline uh, is today, you feel your work at least just three days before. So the next three days you can think about something future. Otherwise, if you're always running after deadline, deadline, there are today's deadline, so last moment, you will be always tiring. So there are <laughs> something I've seen, and also I've seen, I request everybody, always make your, uh, say you're traveling from Calcutta to Delhi, yeah, typical route. So make your target Delhi. Don't bother about Kanpur. Kanpur will just, just lie on the way. Yeah. If you may target your Kanpur, that may not be able to reach even your Allahabad. Now it is called Koyagaraj, right? Koyagaraj. <laughs> so target big, big target, big target. And That's in true. the process, you will reach many things. Target That's should true. be big. Uh, now we are talking about big data. So your target also should be big. You work very hard, define that uh, goal, and don't shortcut, no cheating. This is a very and don't get involved in plagiarism. True. Very Chinese good. and Indians are very good. I my uh, my honest request to younger generation, even from uh, mostly from private universities, even for our uh, state government universities also, they are going for plagiarism for partnership. This is a disease. This is a disease. Once you get it. Once you get acclimatized, it will be difficult to get rid of this. So these are a few advice to my younger generation. Work hard, define your goal, set target to Delhi. Don't bother about Kanpur, it will lie on the way. No shortcut, no plagiarism, and change the topic after five to seven years. See, like, you see, look at the evolution. Patternation after 10 years, image processing. See, very interesting, if you systematize the AI, AI, AI. See, Americans dictate the subject. AI, 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 expert system. Then we call data mining, data, it's a knowledge-based, knowledge-based. In India, also we are, we followed knowledge-based, knowledge-based. Then we have data mining, 2000, 2000, 2010, big data, big data. Now you see data science, data science, data science, deep learning. It will again go after, after the five to six years. Because people will see that deep learning, they cannot do, because they are not going inside. They're all publishing, publishing, publishing. If you data, publish. If you data, but now because of COVID, you are all publishing. Uh, all, all publishing. So by the time you are not learning the subject. So again, my uh, you just match up. If I can survive, now I'm already 70. So after five to seven years, new topic will come. Now you see, I think the transaction, I could touch a big data now today. Are big data has come when? Why? Because somebody has to publish. Um, so, artificial transition AI. What do you mean by artificial transition AI? It was pattern recognition, pattern by machine intelligence, speech recognition, all are related to AI. Why? See, sure. this is a, this is a survival issue for many other. So if you match this, my student do it after five years, no deep learning. Sure. Anyway, I do not I, I do not expect that recurrence of the same issue because learning from examples. Machine learning is learning from examples. I hope people have learned from the examples in 80s that the 10 years neural network died. So I hope this will not recur. Uh, uh, the subject will learn and you will have a fruitful solution. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you very sure, much. Sir. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you so much for such Thank an informative much. talk. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, I, on behalf of the National Academy of Sciences, India, Delhi chapter, and the Indian College. Are you actually now actually happy with my talk or not? Because I <laughs> yes, yes. Pandemic, I was not actually <laughs> energetic to give a talk. In <laughs> no, no, sir. I, I really would like to thank from core of my heart that you uh, accepted our invitation and that too in such a mode. And uh, I, I really feel that all the attendees who have attended the talk will definitely be benefited by your experience and the knowledge which you have disseminated through your lecture itself. Thank you very much, sir.